It is the 7th of the 11th, 2011, and this is today's climate change update. Of course, we had the big earthquake in Oklahoma, uh, more aftershock Sunday after Oklahoma's largest earthquake Saturday. Uh, the weekend's earthquake swarm continues with 14 aftershocks recorded Sunday morning in Oklahoma. The latest aftershock was a magnitude of 3.3 recorded at 12.26 p.m. located 10 miles northeast of Shawnee. Uh, these following the strongest quake in the state's history with one with a magnitude of 5.6 official, uh, which rocked the stands at the Oklahoma State University game at 10.53 Saturday night. Um, I've got another story out of um, Oklahoma uh, News 1-6, or News on 6. I will attach the link below. Basically, they got a video where they had a geologist explaining uh, what's going on. Let's see, uh, doctor, because uh, people, a lot of people are saying that the fracking has either um, caused this earthquake or magnified the earthquake. Um, but we, uh, let's see, let's get to your doctor. Tap says you can blame this event that hap that first happened 300 million years ago. He says when the Wichita and, and Arbuckle and the Wachita Mountains were formed, the ground rose up. But just north of Wichita and uh, Wachita Mountains, the ground sunk and formed the Anadarko and Arkoma Basins. Uh, this action caused a fault line to form between the two basins. That fault line is where the epicenter of these large earthquakes are located. He says that the earth is still trying to relieve pressure from those long ago geological events. And uh, he goes on to say there is no way that this particular fault or this particular earthquakes could have been activated by oil field activity. There's just no evidence of that. And where was that other one? And there's a report down in the comments below. If you follow the reports over the last couple of years, seismic activity has increased in the area that, that since they implemented fracking. Jennifer Reynolds of Discover, Oklahoma, has sustained structural damage at her home in Jones since the fracking began. There's always been small quakes in the area, but this fracking makes matters worse. Might want to ask them in Virginia and in New York. And uh, so it's still up in air with that as far as what's caused this quake, uh, but irregardless, 5.6 quake in Oklahoma. Uh, there was some structural damage, uh, but nothing major serious. And they have three or four stories on that. They're saying it was felt up to five states away. I did not feel it here in Des Moines, Iowa, that's for sure. Tempers flare over six days of Connecticut power outages. Now this is after the the, the Snowtober uh, storm where the heavy wet snow fell on the, le uh, on the trees with leaves still on them and um, three million people were without a power. Uh, tempers are snapping as the fast snow-laden branches that brought down power wires across the northeast last weekend. Uh, with close to 300,000 Connecticut customers still in the dark and state's biggest utility warning them not to threaten or harass uh, repair crews. Oh, wow. So, uh, they are, yeah, they're, one, they got quoted one person, nobody's doing anything. Everybody's looking for some place to vent, not a scapegoat, just some place to vent your anger so somebody will listen and do something. And where was that? Okay, here you go. Uh, a hard-hit suburban town of about 20,000 residents, uh, Simsbury, National Guard troops were deployed to clear debris and have been providing security outside a utility office building. Uh, isn't that unconstitutional? They're not supposed to be cops, are they? Landslide in northwest Columbia leaves 14 dead and dozens more missing. Uh, landslide caused by heavy rains left 14 people dead and dozens more missing in the northwest of Columbia on Saturday. Um, well, they said the landslide buried more than 14 homes in the city. Uh, Manzales, about 165 kilometers northwest of the capital. And over to the extinction protocol. Uh, they've got a story on, on, on um, the ongoing wars of 
drums, you know, um, as far as the gearing up the wars. Rise in the East, Russia to, seeks to expand role of SCO to counter influence of NATO. Also, bas basically, the, the Chinese Prime Minister arrived in Moscow on Sunday to bid, in a bid to seek full membership of the important regional security grouping of Shanghai Corporation Organization, the SCO. Uh, so uh, they've got a mutual defense pact, and they're saying it's mostly economic based, um, but sides are clearly being chosen here. Kinetic 5 M class flares unleashed from Sun in 24 hour period. And here we go with uh, AR 1339 again, uh, putting out several M class flares, uh, five of them in the past 24 hours. And uh, this, this sunspot continues to uh, swing in our direction. And that's about all they have new. Uh, over to the RSOE. Uh, of course, uh, we're having 600 people were evacuated in El Hero, uh, the, the Canary Islands, uh, where the south event continues to erupt. And uh, there are still multiple earthquakes north of the island. Um, they are still debating whether or not to, if they have to evacuate the full 10,000 population or not. Uh, so things are definitely in an action in El Hero still. Uh, more flash flooding out of Italy and France. Uh, apparently a big storm come through, severe flooding. Um, there were some deaths. Uh, landslide in, well they got a landslide listed in Canada, but that was that sinkhole and uh, on the Bayview Average in Toronto. And that is about all they have today. Now over on Energy News, this is the nuclear stuff now. Um, NHK fears that walls of Fukushima spent fuel pools will erode. TEPCO is working to keep salt from corroding holes. <sighs> Bisbee, ongoing fission is occurring at Fukushima. Either a, race, a recent enriched uranium fission or an explosive criticality. They've got another story where a German radiation professor warns of possible nuclear explosion at Fukushima. I encourage you to do your homework on this subject. That's about it for me tonight. Enjoy what you can. Thanks for your support, everybody.